Hey, we've got a 2023 Subaru Outback here. It does come with the factory LED headlights and fog lights. These are the adaptive by LED. They're pretty sweet, actually. They're pretty good. There's nothing we can do to improve those. However, we do have a solution for the fog lights. Those fog lights are definitely lacking in performance. We'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But they are a reflector LED. Um, I'm gonna turn them on for you in just a moment and show you what they look like. We'll be installing some new fog lights and we'll show you the performance differences and what you can expect and how to install this, but it'll all be very clear how, uh, how these new ones will perform in just a moment. All right, so I've got the low beams on right now. I'm gonna turn on the fogs. You can see they don't even hit the wall. They're not aimed that great. And they don't really offer too much in terms of intensity or any usable light output. I'll try to cover up the headlights and show you a output shot next with the lenses covered. All right, so I've put some microfiber towels over the headlights. That way no light gets out. You can see there's a lot of stray light. It is a reflector housing, so you'll see a little bit more stray light. But in terms of usable light, it's, uh, it's pretty minimal. It's, it's not really that great. And while it does have a semi-sharp cutoff, it's not very bright. So let's change that. We'll show you what we're up to next. And if we measure that light output before we put in new ones, we always like to measure hitting really low levels at this height. It's 27. All right, just four push clips over here by the, uh, the side of the fender. Just unsnaps. Up top, you got four push clips, another four, and then uh, I believe two 10 millimeter screws. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna slip these out, and then on the bottom, we'll take off any screws and we'll drop this bumper. Should be pretty straightforward. It's uh, looking pretty easy. All right, there's just uh, one plug on each side, which is nice because they have it on the bumper instead of all the way to the center. That's what makes this model interesting. The newer Subarus are, a lot of newer models actually, instead of having fog lamps on the, kind of on the outsides of the bumper, they're very center weighted now. So there's no real way to get in there because there is, uh, yeah, you just can't, you basically just can't get in there. They're right next to this opening and it makes it difficult to kind of get inside and change those out. So it's easier just to remove the bumper cover. Like I said, there are fasteners that don't need to be removed and that's just holding on that black piece to that painted piece. But these are the stock fog lights. We're gonna remove these. It's what we call a type A fitment and get the new one swapped in. All right, so what the game plan is, here's the factory assembly. You can see it actually collecting some condensation in there. Uh, it's fully adjustable as the new one will be. You got the H11 input underneath. That's the factory one. You got the Morimoto four banger. This comes in the NCS or the HXB. The HXB is a little bit stronger, a little bit more expensive. They're universal pods, but they pair them up with a model specific bracket. And in this case, you'll be using the Type S to complete your installation. This is what the pod looks like. It's got the heat sink in the background, in the back, and the input connector will slip right into there. It'll match up to the car, which is the H11. I'll show you how this all looks in just a moment once I get it set up. I've got these built up now. It takes maybe 10, 15 minutes to do. You gotta take a look at the instructions. It's actually really straightforward once you figure out how it all goes together. This is not um, uncommon. Diode Dynamics has the same type of setup with their SS3 kits. It's kind of like built off a universal pod and then you attach the brackets onto it. So make sure everything is flush, make sure it looks kind of zeroed out when you're done. That's your new adjuster screw. So the difference is the adjuster won't be able to be done from the bottom anymore. You have to get behind it, which does pose a challenge on some models like this model that I'm working on. I'm going to make sure that these look pretty straight with a little bit of a downward angle mount the bumper up and make sure it looks good. And I'll probably have to go in and do some tweaks by removing the bumper each time. So that's a little bit annoying with the way that it's set up. I think they should have done a adjuster on the bottom. Um, but even with Dynamics, they have an adjuster on the bottom and it's not always on the right side. Like these are side specific and the manufacturer might have a cutout on the bottom of the bumper to reach it with a Phillips head. Um, and in this case, you're basically using a Torx or an Allen and you need to adjust it from the top. So try to dial it in and 
it's going to all be worth it no matter what. We'll, we'll show you in a moment. You may have a moment of, oh man, this is not going to fit. Instead of slipping it in here first, I pushed the unit in. It was a little tight around here and then I slipped it into the inside grooves and then it slips in with the 10 millimeter and the one ball holding it. But make sure that red wire is matching up to the white and the black to black. It's all plug and play from here on out. All right, I was actually able to get in there through the lower splash shield on the bottom and make the adjustment to the fog light. And we got the height better dialed in. I mean, this vehicle isn't super low to the ground. Uh, the, the headlights and the fog lights, I think they'll work together really nicely. I'll show you how everything looks like in a moment. And the purpose of this really was to upgrade the lighting for ski trips to Vermont. So these yellow fogs will definitely help with that. But I'm going to get all the plastic rivets and the screws back on, get this buttoned up, and we'll show you how it looks once it's all finalized. So let's take a look at how it looks in the front. You don't have that chrome reflector LED housing. It's a little bit more rugged looking, which is perfect for this Subaru. I think the fitment is perfect. Looks really good when it's in there. Um, and unlike traditional LED pods, these are categorized by three separate LED chips. So it's pretty cool. They have a unique look. And I'll turn them on for you in just a moment. All right, here's the Lux meter at the same location as before, right on the ground, hitting about 170 Lux. If you want something even brighter, you would go with the Morimoto 4 Banger HXB. You can see the light up, it's really well defined, looks really solid. I think we've got that aimed up really nicely. But uh, let us know your thoughts. I think these are a great add on to any model that accepts them. And we've always been big fans of the 4 Banger since it's come out. so. Let us know your thoughts, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel. We look forward to hearing from you.